Behold, I'm doing a new thing. It's now springing forth. And the word says, do you not perceive it? Oh, that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear, to be in tune. Even as we sang, the heaven shall declare the glory of God. I just w I got a flashback of Valentine's Day. I was up early praying in my usual spot, and I saw the clouds in the form of a heart, and in the heart was a cross. And I'm going, oh God, that awesome! Just the heaven shall declare. I was just I wasn't looking for it. I was just praying, as I usually would just start praising the Lord for all His awesome attributes, for all the names of the Lord. And here, there's a Valentine just for me in the heavens. So, I just wanted to share. You know what if we're really um, in tune to the Holy Ghost he's such a he's a lover of my soul amen lover of our souls and we need to know that if you haven't come into this place and feel totally loved and enveloped in the love of Jesus that's where it all starts my walk started with a love relationship that's so deep because I was yet a sinner well I was yet a sinner <laughs> Christ died for me and revealed his love to me and I just could not believe it. I, I just thought, God, I thought I had to straighten up before I would know the love of God and it just totally melt, melted me, inspired me to put away everything that wasn't pleasing to him because his love goes in so deep. Amen. Amen. So if you're struggling, you're trying to you know, make your life the way you think it's supposed to be. You're supposed to, you know, all these things that you somehow feel programmed that you're supposed to do or not supposed to do. Just start with the love of God. Amen. Just start Just start to say, just as I am, without one plea, I'm a messed up little girl here. <laughs> Please do something. Help me. And my first prayer, I didn't know the prayer of accepting Jesus. I just fell on my knees. I said, God, if this is going to work, you're going to have to do it. Amen. And so every single one of us that truly knows Jesus, it's not because of our own good works that we try to clean up ourselves. We can't, can we? Isn't that wonderful? So stop trying and just... Just drink. Drink the love of Jesus this morning. If you get nothing else, just I just pray this morning that you'll feel his love, his unconditional love. When you come with your mistakes and all your junk, eh, because we all bring junk, is just to come. Uh, Billy Graham passed away. Many of you have heard about that and seen on the news. What a m wonderful tribute to the greatest evangelist ever. And I remember uh, my parents watched Billy Graham probably years did. And oh, wow, he just kind of stood out. He stood out as so, so passionate for the Jesus. Amen. So passionate for the Lord. But I, I just instantly, I had a book of Billy Graham I do right beside my um my coffee table at the cottage which is a big log and I just I put uh, this book Billy Graham's book to my heart and I prayed if that I pray for the anointing of the evangelist and if we could just give people one little taste of the love of God here let me pray for you if they could get one little whiff of how much God loves them they'd never look back Amen. It's not a bunch of truths we got to pound into your head. It's just experiencing Jesus. And I pray that that's our, our kind of our logo around here. Come experience Jesus. And we want you to taste that today. We are starting this new series on wisdom. Because I realize, you know what, all of us want to succeed, don't we? we? We all want healthy, happy children. We all want beautiful marriages that reflect God's uh, grace. We all want to succeed in finance. We all want to do well in our careers and stand out, make a difference in this world. None of us sets out, uh, you know, our married life when we come together and say I, those words, I do to say we're going to fail. Nobody goes into life, uh, starts a career and says, I want to be the worst nurse ever or whatever. We don't start out. We're all heading to succeed. As a matter of fact, I just got a picture. Every single one of you are sitting there this morning because you, out of thousands of millions, 
you won the race. You're the one that got there. You were created to be a winner, to, to succeed. God has programmed every single one of us with his DNA. The thing is, then why do so many fail? Why are there so many failures uh, along the way? And it's simply because we don't, we lack the wisdom. If we knew the right thing to do, we would do it. How many times as parents have you just kind of pulled out your hair and said, God, if I knew the right thing to do or say, I would do it right now, but I just don't know, how do you handle that? Or what do you, how do you, how do you answer to that? What do you do with that? And maybe in marriage too, there's times you've just almost wanted to pull your hair out. Some of you have pulled your hair out. But you know, maybe you're just going, God, I just don't understand this woman, or I just, what on earth? And, uh, and there's times we just don't know the right thing to do. And so God gives us his a wonderful book. <laughs> and he gives us a lifetime of practice. And he's leading and guiding and he gives us the Holy Spirit to coach us. Aren't you glad? And none of us have arrived, but we're all on that journey. We're all on the journey because we all want to succeed. And so God gives us a book of wisdom. So first of all, I'd like to define wisdom for you. What is wisdom anyways? We all have a general idea. But I believe wisdom is the word from God. We have the word of God, but there's times we need the word of the Lord in order to know what to do. And he promises to give us that word. Uh, he promises to lead us by his spirit. And there's times we say, God, I need a word from heaven about this situation. So wisdom is a, the ability to produce... The perfect results or the perfect ends and to achieve those ends by the most perfect means or choices or actions. So if we have a destination how to get from point A to point B, there are steps along the way that we need to take to get there. So first of all, we need to know what those steps are and then by obedience, we need to just carry them out. By faith, we we, we, we carry those steps out. We follow God's word whether it makes sense or not. Because there's so many principles of God's word that he just tells us to obey. And if we, if we just obey the word of the Lord, if we just do it God's way, we can be guaranteed to achieve those ends, to get to our destination. And, and so God maps it out for us. And that's basically what, what wisdom is. Wisdom sees things in focus. So it sees the immediate, sees this day, sees the situation where we're at. But then it also broadens out to see the big picture and to see what steps we need to take to get to that destination. Um, on my GPS, on my car, I just am so thankful for that. That's the best invention in the world because I don't have a built-in GPS. My husband has an incredible built-in GPS. He can go to England, land in the busiest airport, get in, drive on the wrong side of the road, in the wrong side of the car with a steering wheel, and I'm going, where are you going? And he's got an inward thing. It's just not fair. But this is what God has done. Is some he gives certain graces to and others he's left us out in totally dependence on somebody else getting us there. But this GPS does my thinking for me and tells me to turn in so many yards I can turn left or whatever. It's wonderful. But God gives us his GPS. <laughs> I'm glad he's given us his GPS. This is how to get there in life. Amen. And so uh, I want to break it down. I've broken it down into an acrostic. W-I-S-D-O-M. So wisdom, W, uh, is for what? What is wisdom? What is wisdom? So we're going to go to God's word, Proverbs 1. Proverbs is an incredible thing. If you're young and you're still just heading out, they say you can, there's a proverb for every single day. 
of the month. Proverbs 31. So there's a proverb. Uh, one of my son-in-laws, that's what he, he just stays in Proverbs. If you open his Bible, it just plunks on Proverbs. And, and it's just, he, read a proverb, read the chapter. And if you just keep reading it, it's just going to bring about a change in your heart. It's good. So let's, let's go to the word Proverbs 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction and behavior, doing what's right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, saying the riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So here we have God's, if you want to just draw a square or whatever on each one of those incredible um, definitions of what wisdom is. So wisdom is the know-how. You want a real simple way to remember wisdom, what is that? It's the know-how. It's the know-how how to have a successful marriage. It's, it's the know-how how to train up a child in the way they shall go. It, no matter what philosophies come and go, if God's word is followed, his instruction, it'll get us there, step by step. So wisdom is a step by step instruction and knowledge and foresight to get to where you're going. Isn't that good? Just simple. Wisdom. So when you try to remember this word, you can just remember how to spell wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the know-how. It's the know-how, how to have friendships. It speaks to every single area of our life. He gives us everything. Everything. Say with me, everything. Everything pertaining to life. And everything pertaining to godliness. Everything in between is, is the wisdom of God and it's in God's word. Word. The Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom. Amen. So uh, the I in wisdom, moving right along. The I is, wisdom is personified. Who is wisdom? Wisdom is. Wisdom is a person. Wisdom in, in this book of Proverbs is described as a she. I'll just leave that one alone. Let's just go to the word here. So she will get, here we go in uh, chapter 1, verse 20. Out of the open wisdom, out of the open wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On the top of the wall she cries out. At the city gate she makes her speech. How long will you love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my rebuke, then I'll pour out my thoughts to you, and I'll make known to you my teachings. So wisdom is a person. It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he was going away, and when I leave, don't worry, don't grieve, because I'm going to send another one. I'm going to send another counselor, one just like me, who's going to lead and guide you into all truth. So wisdom is a person, just like God doesn't have love, but God is love. God is wisdom, and that's who he is. So wisdom is a person. Wisdom is the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, he will lead and guide you into all truth. You have no need that somebody else teach you, for the Holy Spirit will teach you. Isn't that wonderful? He's going to teach you. He's going to give you wisdom. All we need to do is cry out for it. All we need to do is say, God, I lack knowledge or I lack wisdom. If anyone lacks knowledge, let him ask of me and I will give it to you liberally without upbraiding, without reproaching you. God doesn't mind you asking. He wants you to ask him, include him, say, Holy Spirit, I need you. And I have found something so amazing about the Holy Spirit. 
He cares about every little detail. Amen. Ever not find your keys or can't find something? It's like, Holy Spirit, where is that? Or Holy Spirit, what do I do? Holy Spirit, what's your plan for the day? He wants to come alongside and guide you. Take you step by step so you reach your de destination at the end of the day to say, that was an awesome day. I accomplished everything that I feel like I set out to do because the Holy Spirit was my guide. He was my, he was right alongside of me. That's where the Holy Spirit is. So wisdom is a person he's, God had personified and he's with us every waking moment, waiting for us to ask him. Just waiting to include him in your day. It's like, and then sometimes in desperation, we ask him a question, we go, now why didn't I ask him five minutes ago? Amen, instead of being frustrated. So no more frustration, include the Holy Spirit. He is wisdom. I for is. Wisdom is. Wisdom is God. Amen. So S. S is for sin. Wisdom will keep you from sin. I would like to turn to... Um, that's my scripture here. Proverbs 2, 12 to 19. It'll keep you from the pitfalls of sin. What is sin? Sin is merely missing the mark. So if we're heading off into a certain direction, we don't want to miss the point of exit or miss that is what sin is. Sin is missing it. You missed the mark. You got, you got off at the wrong exit or whatever. That's basically what sin is. Sin is missing the mark. And so the word tells us here in verse 2, uh, chapter 2, 12, wisdom will save you from wicked men. Wisdom will save you from people who are bent on doing things their own way. You know, lots in the world today is wicked. It basically means bent on doing things our own way. Thinking we know better than God. And so wisdom will save you. It will help you recognize, uh-uh-uh, that is crooked. That is off the path here. So it will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse who have left the straight path to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. So wisdom will save you from the pitfalls of sin. And believe me, there are a lot out there. Amen? And we're going to take a look next week of how Eve... Listen to some bad advice, and she heard it through ears, the very ears that Satan wanted her to hear it by. And she turned to devious ways, and she turned to doing something a natural way or something that made sense to her. And so the word says, do not lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge me in all your ways and I will make your path straight. I will save you from going to the crooked paths. I'll keep you on the straight and narrow. Broad is the road. It looks so good. That leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life. And few are those who find it. Few are those to say, I don't get that, God. That looks like a better way, an easier way, but I'm going to stick to your word, how your word says, and I'm going to trust that my ultimate destination is going to be where you want me to go. Amen? So, wisdom will keep you from sin. And then D is for do. It'll help you not only save you from what you're not supposed to do, but it'll show you what to do what to do in a certain situation. And Proverbs is full of wise sayings to tell us what to do. What to do and what not to do. How to act and how not to act. How to answer and how not to answer. How to have good friendships and good relationships and how not to. 
And these are so important to teach your kids because they're word pictures. My kids were trained. I just had to say a proverb now and again, and they would know exactly what they meant. If somebody was having a bit of an attitude or a bad day, I'd say, don't grab that passing dog by the ears. That means if a dog is just, actually we had a dog this morning, a wet mangy dog who was looking by the front door. I go, oh no, 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 you don't. But you know, you don't grab, if a dog is just passing, you don't grab him by the ears. You know dog language. They say if a dog comes along, wants to sniff you out, you stand like this, you put your hands down because you don't want to look at them directly. That means you're, you're engaging them in a fight. <laughs> and so so there's times in relationships you don't grab the passing dog by the ears. You just go, I'm going to let that one pass. There's a time to speak and a time not to speak. Don't answer a fool according to his foolishness or you'll become like him. How many times have you made that mistake? You just, you couldn't help it. You just had to give them a piece of your mind before you know it, something broke out that you didn't want it to break out. And you go, ah, I didn't want it to go there. Well, then you should have not said anything. Amen. And so wisdom will tell you what to do and what not to do. Proverbs 3, 1 to 10. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years, and they'll bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you'll win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats brim with new wine. So it's telling us, it's addressing every single area of our lives and telling us what to do. Amen. Aren't you glad? It's just like, again, God says this about our finances. We do it because he says so. That settles it. God says, do not, uh, t do not spare the rod. Amen. Uh, to discipline your children, to train them up. It, it tells us what to do. And it tells us also what not to do. Always for omniscient. Omniscient is a big word that basically means God is all-knowing. So God is all-knowing. He knows everything, and we know the rest. God knows everything, and we know the rest, which is a lot of times we don't know. We don't know where we're going. We don't know the plans that he has for us, but he knows the plans for us. Jeremiah 8 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So we don't always know. I didn't have an idea that this was the plan of God for my life. I hadn't a clue. He didn't show me beginning for men. He just had to walk in obedience. When I had five children, he said to me, pour yourself into your children. So I did my best in doing that. He taught me, how do you discipline? Uh, so I prayed one day in the kitchen, Holy Spirit, what do I do? And he just uh, put in my heart just to send them to the room, wait on the Lord. And I would just pray in the Spirit. My son used to say, if you hear mom coming up the stairs, praying in tongues, swatting her leg with a wooden spoon, look out. It's time to stick books in your, in your pants or something. But you know, uh, there, was, there was instruction, don't, don't spare the rod. And that was a hard thing for me to get out of my head because I just go, and how do you do that when you're mercy motivated? I did it because the Holy Spirit, it's like, okay. So it was always the same. He gave me wisdom how to administer. How does that look to the Lord? What does that look like, Lord? What does discipline your children look like? 
so that they know it's in love, but they know, uh uh, this is a boundary line. If you do that, if you run out on the road, this is what's going to happen. Look at that squish squirrel over there. And God gives you wisdom how to, how to train a child, what they should do and what they can't do. It's up to us. Amen. And he gives us liberally. And boy, do you need it as parents. It's like, oh, phew, we, 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 we made it. We've gone through that. But we need wisdom because we don't know the p exact plans the Lord has for each and every little one. But it makes a difference, doesn't it? One will have an incredible interest in one field and another and another. And it's up to you to develop that. If your kid keeps praying for a piano, like one of our daughters, our second daughter, every night, Mommy, can you buy me a piano? It wasn't like we had a piano in the house or mommy or daddy played the piano, but inside it was became very clear she wanted a piano and then she started praying for a piano teacher. God gave her those things, but it was up to us, do you develop that? And sometimes we do really good and sometimes we really suck at something. It took the grace of God to get in the back of Johnny's little dirt bike one day and go up this hill and God help me and do some air time and just like, okay, God, is this, oh God, phew. I live through that. Some, sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard work. You really have to lay down, down your life to allow a child to be all that they're supposed to be. Amen. So God's wisdom shows us exactly what to do, what not to do. Because he's all-knowing. He knows what he's created in that child. And we want to give them every possible advantage so that they too will reach their God-given destination. They're so potential actually packed that I just go, there's probably not a greater area that we need to cry out for wisdom for when we're entrusted with a child. Amen. So, but God is all knowing. He knows the plans he has for them. He can download in us not only the wisdom and the insight and the understanding, help me to understand this child, but also how to get them to where they're going. Amen. God is all knowing. Did I read the scripture? Oh, the scripture for that one was, if anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask of me, and I will give it to you liberally. That means a heap and help and just a big heap and help and dose of what you need, amen, uh, for those incredible years as you're raising up your children. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end and everything in between. And everything's always fresh in him. There's always a fresh day. Oh God, maybe you would have blown it today. You lost your patience or whatever. But he says, my mercies are brand new every morning. And that goes for all of us here. Wherever we feel like we've messed up a little bit, God's saying, you know what? Though your sins are a scarlet... I'm going to make them as white as snow. I still will get that person to their destination, even if we think, oh, I didn't do a very good job. Because there are times where it's really, you feel like, oh, God, I could have done so much more. And you only have so much energy. I think everybody would be a great parent if they just didn't get tired. <laughs> That's why I think so wonderful. As Chris yawns huge, the baby will keep them up for 3 o'clock because she's cutting her molars or whatever. I just go, God, if I didn't, if I didn't ever get tired in my heart, I want to go skating, go tobogganing, do all these fun things with them, but it's like, oh, I'm tired. And that's a reality. Amen. But again, God's, God's grace. God's grace. M is for our motive. And our motive for getting wisdom has to be right. There's been lots of people who did the right thing, but they did it for the wrong motive. They did the, they took the right steps, but it was more to influence people to get them to do what they wanted to do rather than the motivation of pure love. And as I waited on the Lord for this point, he just put on me, it comes back to the first commandment. Our motive has to be because we love God with all of our hearts. We love him and we want to do things his way. So that needs to be our motive every day. Why do we need that wisdom? Why do we cry out, God, because I want to please you. I want to know at the end of the day I did the right thing. I'm taking the right steps. I'm walking in step with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our motive has to be because we love the Lord with all our heart and our soul and our strength. And we love our brother and our sister and our husband and our wife and everyone around us as with the love of the Lord. 
That needs to be our motive for why we need wisdom. We need wisdom because, God, we want to be in sync with you, want to be in sync with the Holy Spirit, in step with the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 1, 7, it says it again, fear the Lord, worship the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Uh, the Amplified Bible says the principal thing, the starting point, the essence. Wisdom is the whole principal thing. So if wisdom is the principal thing, it's the biggest thing. It's the biggest thing for us to land up at our destination, to run that race and cross the finish line, to hear from the words of the Lord, well done, good and faithful servant. You made it. You fulfilled. You got to your destination. You followed my step-by-step -step instructions. You followed my word, my plan, my map, my GPS. You followed it to the T. And look at this. The fear of the Lord is a principal thing, the, the essence, the fear of the Lord. And I think, uh, when I think of the fear of the Lord, it says in the Amplified, the, the worshipful, it's the worshipful, um, reverent worship and fear of the Lord. And I think that is motivated, again, by two things. It is motivated by love, but it, uh, not the gushy kind of love. Like, God loves you just as you are. But he loves you too much to leave you just as you are. Amen. So the fear of the Lord is the incredible love of God. Just that love relationship. Hallelujah. There's nothing between me and you. We're walking and I want to walk totally in step with your spirit today, God. But it's also, it says the fear of the Lord because there also is that he is also a holy God. Amen. We can't, we can't have one without the other. We, we really need two boundary lines on the side of the road. There's two ditches. There are two, two off the shoulder sides of the road. You, you can't go over too far off of this side and you're going to land up in the ditch. And you can't go too far over there. If you're just always, oh God is, is a holy God. He, he's mighty and he's holy and we got to fear the Lord. If you got too much of the spank and not just the love and affection of the Lord, uh, both ends are, 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 we have to have strong boundaries both ways. A good dad, I think of a daddy in this way, I loved my dad, he was affectionate in his own way, He'd mess up our hair and it was more of a rougher tumble, I didn't just sit on his knee and enjoy, it was more like play kind of thing. But you know what, there was a time when he says, no more talking. And he'd go, girls, <laughs> and we'd all scramble in our beds, pull up our crew. And, and there was a point where we just knew, okay, we're just crossing the line. I don't like the sound of that. So it was because he loved us that he wanted us to get to bed because we wouldn't get up early in the morning, catch the bus, etc. But do you see what I'm saying is, is it's got to be the reverent an awesome, reverential fear of the Lord that keeps us. It's the principal thing. And so we're just ex um, excited to be able to start Revelations. We're going to start in Genesis next week and realize that was the way the devil got in. Was to trick Eve into eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And she saw that it was good for making her wise. And she ate. And that was it. it so we're going to, I won't preach that message because it is a, whew, that's where I thought we were going to start. And I thought, nope, we need good introduction. What is wisdom? And so I hope you'll remember throughout the week, W-I-S-D-O-M. What is wisdom? Wisdom is a person. He's the Holy Spirit with you. As it'll keep you from sin. It'll show you what to do, D for... It'll, it'll remind you of the omniscience of God. God, you know where I'm going. I'm acknowledging you in my way because that's where I'm going. I'm going to cross that finish line. Help me to know what to do, what steps I should take to get there. And then the motive, may my motive be pure. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, a new and a right spirit so that I can take those steps to get there. Amen? 
Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. It is now 10 to 12, and I, like Gil said, we invite you to um, celebrate with us. Uh, to say, look what the Lord has done, and Doug's going to do that. Uh, he's done a fantastic job for 20-some years of doing all our books and all our numbers, and I'm so glad he does that, and he does an amazing job. And we're just going to give him a hand clap as he's coming up. And uh, say we appreciate them. Where would we be without the body, all the musicians and, and everything? Gil and I were driving here uh, Thursday night for worship night. And I said, Gil, we're just going to enjoy. There was a day we had to do everything. Our kids had to do everything. They didn't have a choice whether to be on the worship team or whatever. We had to do everything. And now it's like, God... You've made it so wonderful, so simple. His yoke is easy and burdens light, but it's because of everybody playing their part. Yeah. 